because we're probably too close together, but whatever. Hello everyone, welcome to a new vlog. I'm going to share what's been going on in and out of the studio since the end of April, when I was sharing all of those Plan April daily painting videos. I've been waiting for this box for a while now. It's full of customized things that we're gonna sell at the Gordon Castle Highland Games next weekend. Ooh, okay. These are notebooks. And I used a variety of designs, specifically my little Scotland series that I made a while ago that is a pretty good seller on my website but they're just blank inside and very simple paper. Um, not like artist quality sketchbooks, but more just like everyday sketchbook or notebooks. So you can just write notes or to-do lists or whatever. I keep one of these by my computer at all times because I'm constantly writing thoughts and notes and to-do lists. <laughs> These are already a sign. You missed a spot right here. I sure did. So you have to line this up on the very edge of the printed section. Press down with two fingers, just a tiny bit of blade, and then you run the blade along the edge of the ruler without slicing into the ruler because I don't know where my metal ruler is. So we're just gonna Go slow and press straight down. And then you get a nice crisp edge. So I've printed all of the test four by six prints um, just to get an idea of whether they look good or not as small prints. And then once I'm happy with the brightness and color and everything, I also have to check how they look in these little frames. So we just ordered a ton of these because I think it really makes the prints look awesome. And if you get them in bulk, it's actually pretty affordable. Depending on if the print is dark or light, I choose a light or dark frame. So for a dark print, I would choose a light frame. Maybe something like that would look good in a darker frame. But yeah, that's pretty much what we start with. And then I hand it over to Wolfie and he prints a million of them. <laughs> and then we just kind of quality check as we go. And then he will put all the frames on them and start bagging them up. And I have to sign all the backs of them. Don't let me forget. <laughs> it's hard to show it, but that's kind of how it will look. I really like it with the big border. Gives it enough space around the print. You can basically see what you need to see from here. You get the benefit of this. Yeah. Let's just start with this layout when we get there. Okay. Start hanging things, see how it works, and at least we know we have a sort of solution to start with. Yeah. Let's pretend the books so, are here. Okay, so I'm thinking this. The entire living room is basically show stuff and cat stuff. <laughs> We've got a full car, as you can see, and we're headed to Gordon Castle to start setting up. 
we have all day to set up and then it starts tomorrow morning so it's really nice that they give us so much time yeah they give well they give us yesterday as well but yeah. we're still getting prepared yeah we'll it's pretty luxurious it's and it's so close to like if we forget something we can just run home which is yeah. great yeah this is like it's the ideal area it smells so good Setup day number one at the Gordon Castle Highland Games. <laughs> so basics, it's our skeleton. I love how easy this is though. Yeah. My idea was to have this behind that hidden and shining up the top. Um, I don't think we can fit all of them though. I'll just do like three of each. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Three of each. Um, yeah. I might have to make another one of these. Lots of green ones here, and we'll do that and then put that down there. These aren't supposed to be out. What are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. Why did you put them out? I don't know. We're gonna have to. They're, they're the glossy. Changed it to Moody Bay. <laughs> Lost shores. Three. Blanco Mist. Three. Calendar Standing Stones. Five. Callan Bay. So you'll need to make a longer wire. Right, okay. So that with that. I, well, actually, yeah, because it will. It's not glossy. I'm just thinking you can have that and that there. Okay. Make sure we're not blocking it. Or can this one go there? Go down to the bottom. Okay. I can see. Is it good enough? I think so. I just wanted to put a close up of this. Hang it from a hook. It goes all the way down here. Then you slide the wire on there and simply pull till however high you need it. And you can pull and release and slide it up and down easily, which is awesome. This is our little building that we're in with all the other vendors in the castle tower. And it's starting to clear up a little, which is exciting. We may have good weather.
night when we got home <laughs> we just left everything in the car because it's kind of a nightmare to take it out when you're exhausted it's packed full I'll show you all the art I've been working on since the beginning of May I was very prolific during the first few weeks of May pretty much since the end of April when I finished the plan April challenge which was painting outside every day during April. You can go watch the video about that. Um, but yeah, since then, I really haven't painted much. Um, I've just been obsessed with drawing, drawing these kind of high contrast landscapes in specifically. Um, and I've only done a few in my toned paper sketchbook. I've been playing with a huge variety of sketchbooks lately. Definitely lots of line work and just exploring rock formations and sometimes adding other elements as well, uh, playing with different me uh, methods of shading. So actually this is just ink that's diluted with water. And then there are a couple paintings in here from the last few weeks, uh, the last month and a half actually. and especially playing with my new palette, which I've shared in a previous video, the new Daniel Smith palette. I got a few new pens as well, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but like a lot of these are from the coastal journey and I need to actually scan them and upload them to my website. So I definitely have a lot of variety in these, but overall they're really inspired by my latest adventures. It's kind of funny sometimes when you go back and find uh, an old sketchbook that you sort of fell out of love with and then all of a sudden you are obsessed with it again. Like this is my Pith sketchbook I got last year and I used it for a little while. Uh, mostly ink work, um, mixed media, and then I just stopped using it for months and months and months and now I can't get enough again. It's kind of hard to show. It's really I know it's really bright out here, but um, yeah, I can't get enough of this one. <laughs> I'm mainly using ink, uh, like I said, so doing all these little high contrast drawings and I did get a couple of new pens. So one of them is blue, like almost like a bright sky blue color. And one of them is sepia, which I've been really loving and I might order a couple more varieties of sepia pens. This is my little ink sketching kit. So basically all the things I like sketching with at the moment. Most of these are waterproof. This is actually filled with non-waterproof ink and it's a brush tip. 
so I can get really fine and really thick marks with it and I can dilute it with water and make a really cool washy or shade shade with it um, but most of these are waterproof a few that you've probably seen before that I've used and then a few new ones so like these sepia ones are new um, this is the new blue one I got a gray marker as well a fine liner and of course my white Posca pen um, this is a Copic thick Copic brush pen but it's not really a brush it's like a just a really wide nib a couple of these you've seen before these are like my fountain pens the sailor is one of my favorites it's got that 55 degree nib on it so it's really fun and I filled it with green ink so I've been loving that one and then Wolfie got me this manuscript pen for Christmas and I filled it with blue ink and that's been fun as well I can get some pretty thick marks with that so yeah here's my variety of pens that I'm just loving light lately and I keep them in here and take them pretty much everywhere I go I haven't done much in this one. Um, oh, that's a patreon tutorial I did recently with gouache and then I thought this would be kind of fun to show as well this is a bonus tutorial I did on patreon about my palette my limited plein air palette so nine mixing colors which still is kind of a lot but these nine mixing colors and I talked in a video about why I chose those specific ones for this little palette and how I use them to mix a variety of tones that I use all the time I had a lot of fun making this little diagram of my limited palette I think I want to do that more often with my art supplies oh and this is actually something new I'm trying it's the Bao Hong rough 100% cotton paper and it's a really good size it's like a 10.2 by 7 inch size so it's really nice and I think I'm going to take this outside with me but it's got really beautiful texture I don't know if you can see that in the video so even though I'm mostly doing ink drawings right now I'm still loving this little palette and the mood strikes me randomly and I just grab it and Hello everyone. Oh gosh, it is crazy bright today. Let's find a little spot to sit because it's time to have a little chat. I just wanted to mention that I will be talking about something a little bit, well, very emotional 
And if anyone is not in the right headspace or heart space for that, maybe skip to a different chapter of this video. Uh, it's totally understandable. Nah, I just wanted to give you a heads up because I understand when you're in, when you're feeling something, sometimes it's really hard to watch certain types of videos, but overall everything's okay. It's just we have to talk about something. <laughs> I've tried so many times to make this video and I even wrote a script thinking that it would help me just get through it and <laughs> stick to the point because I, uh, my mind is just a puddle. <laughs> um, a couple weeks ago Vader passed away and a lot of you have seen him in a lot of my videos over the years and I just don't know how to function. I just try to hold on to the millions of amazing moments we shared and really replace the hard memories with beautiful memories because he was really sick for the last few weeks he had heart disease and he had so many vet appointments and tests and you know, all bl blood work and he was taking three pills every day. And then at the very end, he had, uh, the day he died, he had a heart attack and a stroke. I mean, maybe more than one of each, it was really bad. And he didn't deserve that. Because he was the most, beautiful, gentle soul. And I know peop some people are going to watch this and be like, he's just your pet, he's just your cat. But he was not, <laughs> he was my constant companion for f just about five years. I mean, he was only five. When you work from home, especially, you're with your pets. You're with your companions 24-7. <laughs> so I spent most of the last five years with him by my side. And I mean, he was also an out indoor outdoor cat, so he would go outside a lot. But I would I mean, every time I was out in my garden or in the side garden, even walking around my neighborhood, I would see him and he would walk with me <laughs> and like lay in the grass with me and roll around and he loved being outside especially I called him my sunshine kitty because he just would lay in the sun for hours and roll around in the grass I guess most cats like that <laughs> but it's so hard to be in the garden even just without him it's hard to do anything and to everything in my life reminds me of him and even though we couldn't speak to each other, we still understood each other. <laughs> and it was like the only cat I've ever known that would literally stare you in the eyes, or me at least. We would just stare at each other and just have an understanding. And I knew all of his different meows and what each meow meant. Like, does he want food? Does he want to go out? Does he want pets? All the, you know, you get used to their language. <laughs> and we would also have moments where he would just look at me with the most sweet face and I would pet him. And he like, you could just tell he was having the blissful moment. And I just wanted to give him endless blissful moments. <laughs> I just try to remember that I, I gave him everything I could. I now have to learn how to live in my life 
without him. And I have another beautiful boy, Floki, <laughs> to take care of and spoil rotten. And of course, Wolfie is so supportive and he's he's had many pets over the years and he knows what this is like, but Vader was my first. He was my little furry soulmate. <laughs> And some of you are probably wondering what this has to do with art, my channel, but it is me. And it's the reason, oh, this, this is the reason I haven't been able to make any videos or barely any art actually. And so many of you have messaged me, like when I posted, when it happened, I wanted to share what happened because a lot of people knew him, knew of him, and loved him from afar. And since then, I've had so, so many heartfelt, amazing messages. And I really want to thank you all for that because even though it's hard to read, it just reminds me that he was so loved. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I have to figure out who I am without him. It's not like I feel like I'm starting over, but in some ways, my own joy in life was tied so closely to him. So I need to, to find my joy and keep my joy going in different ways. There's something that's been on my mind for a long time, actually. And I haven't posted a video in a very long time about my art practice and kind of where I'm at with all of that. I did post a vlog about it last summer, I think. And I was kind of explaining how I felt a little lost or um, like I didn't know what path to take. I didn't know. I didn't really know like what direction to go in with my art because on one hand the thing I always thought I was supposed to do was to be in the studio, make paintings, make somewhat bigger paintings that um, could be shown in galleries and at exhibitions and enter art shows and you know follow the typical artist route. But my heart was telling me that I wanted or should be following what felt more natural to me, which is to be outside as much as possible, um, going on my coastal journey, going on my hikes and my adventures with my sketchbooks and my cameras and documenting the journey in that way. It's not, there isn't a manual for being a professional artist. <laughs> I mean, you can follow in the footsteps of people. You can, well, you can try to, and you can copy what other people are doing, but to be true to myself, I have to follow what feels right for me and my situation. And that's painting outside, that's sketching outside as much as possible. And so I, I kind of allowed myself to accept that. And over the last winter and the, this past spring, which I guess we're now into summer, I've totally embraced that. And I stopped making myself feel guilty for not creating the typical like series of art that you show in a gallery that you, you know pursuing that side of things instead I allow myself to go with the flow and and go on my coastal journey and paint outside and capture everything in my sketchbook and I do some paintings now and then in the studio but mostly that's for tutorials because I still post uh, monthly tutorials on my patreon and I do all that but I like live in my sketchbook <laughs> and it's okay. And that's just who I am as an artist right now. Maybe someday, probably someday when I have bigger, a bigger studio, a bigger space, um, I will get back to canvases and I have tons of them in my storage. <laughs> I have all the supplies ready to go. Or if the mood strikes, you know, I can just do that. But it feels so good to finally just be myself and be okay with it and embrace it and 
like the response has been really good as well. My, I mean, I don't really look at the analytics of it all, but uh, interaction wise on Instagram, on YouTube, whenever I share these adventures painting outside, the response is heartfelt and excited and people like seeing that side of things because I don't just show the result, I show like the process of getting there because I guess to me that's just as important or maybe more important and I love when people connect with that side of things because I get a lot of messages from people saying uh, your content or videos, your photos, whatever, like they inspired me to go out and try it, to go outside and paint and I love that because to me it is the best feeling in the world and I know for a lot of other people it can be too and maybe they just are a little afraid to try it or just need a little inspiration, <laughs> motivation, because it's, I also like to show that it's not easy. It's not just going to, you're not going to go out and have the perfect day outside and paint a masterpiece. Like most of the time, it's the painting, the sketch is like, okay, <laughs> or sometimes it's a total disaster, but it's still so valuable because you're going to learn something every time. That, that's just the truth. And oftentimes, each of those little moments, every time you go out and paint, they build up to something. And at some point, you do create something that you absolutely love. And that is an amazing feeling. But along the way, you had so many wonderful experiences, like wherever you are, wherever you're painting, wherever you're going, you're experiencing it. You're being you're being in that moment because you have no other no other choice. You have to be present if you're sitting outside and painting. <laughs> so it's not like all those little mistakes and those moments that took you to get to the good piece were wasted. It, it's still a beautiful experience and it enriches your life so much. So I love hearing that people are embracing that and trying it and it, it can really change your life. It changed my life so much. It changed my life from feeling stuck in a way to uh, stuck in that feeling of I need to do this to be a real artist and now I feel free. <laughs> and in addition, I'm also exploring my country. As many of you know, I live in Scotland. I moved here seven-ish years ago and I feel like I have barely scratched the surface of what I, I know there's so much more out there. Sorry, I had to move the camera because it was overheating in the sun. It's been beautiful lately, so beautiful. And we've had quite a few warm days and also a little bit of chill. So I have my scarves and stuff out still. Anyways, so the reason I'm sharing all of this is because, well, I like to share the journey and it does change a lot over the years. If you've been watching my channel for years, you'll have seen all of the different paths I've t tried to take <laughs> or have taken and where they've led me to. And yeah, it, it's, it's always changing. And I also try to remember that I've only been doing this since 2015, kind of 2016. It's, it's, a, it's not a lot of time to discover yourself or your path as an artist. And I think it's really easy when you're wat when you are watching YouTube videos, art vlogs on YouTube, or you follow a lot of artists on social media. Um, you see people who have their path figured out, or at least it looks that way, and you kind of forget, or you don't know how long it took them to get to that point. I mean, no one or not a lot of people share their entire journey from from the moment they started as an artist to where they are now or where they are when you see them. And if they do, they probably don't share the whole thing. Um, a lot of people don't really share the, the ups and downs, or they share the ups, but not the downs. <laughs> and that's just how it is on social media. And it's really easy to compare yourself and to think, well, everyone else has it figured out. Why don't I have it figured out? Shouldn't I have it figured out? <laughs> And as you, you know, everyone always hears that, that saying, comparison is the thief of joy. And it really is, I think. Um, 
So instead of comparing yourself to other people, compare yourself to who you were five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago, however many years. And you will really start to see your own personal growth. You'll start to maybe be reminded and get a little more confident in your decisions because even though I've only been a professional artist since about 2015-16, I have always been creative and been an artistic. <laughs> but there are so many choices you have to make along the way and you have no idea where they're going to take you or which one is the right choice. So you just have to choose something. And I try to choose the thing that feels right. I try to follow my intuition and weigh the pros and cons as well. Sometimes you have to make choices that are financial. That's okay. I mean, we all have to get through life, get through, pay the bills. <laughs> um, but overall, I still try to keep my passion and my, my vision of what where I want to be someday in my mind and try to make choices that will get me there. But again, enjoying the journey along the way, not, not just writing it off as, oh, I just have to get through this. Oh, you know, it's something I think about a lot is how I often, I, I, wouldn't, I don't think I'm the only one who does this, but I'll be like, oh, if only I could do that one thing, everything would be fine. I'll be happy then. Or if only I could sell this collection of paintings, everything will be fine. Or if only I could buy a house with a studio and renovate it to be however I want, then I'll be happy. And if you only think about that, you lose out on so much of your life. And that's sad. <laughs> so even if moment, the moments right now are hard for whatever reason, like I, at least I try to really find moments of joy in that, in the difficulties as well, in the years that are hard. Like for so many years, when I first started, I was barely making it month to month, paycheck to paycheck. And like, I had to get so much support, so much outside support. I had, when I was streaming, when I first started my art practice, I was streaming like full time on Twitch and like sharing my art process along the way. And I would have to do so many fundraisers to buy art supplies <laughs> or like my computer died and I had to fundraise to buy a new computer and that required like tons and tons of streaming and like just going nonstop for years and thankfully now I've built my passive income up to be to the point where I don't have to be working 60, 70, 80 hours a week to survive. <laughs> Um, but during those years, even though some weeks it was so hard and some months we had to borrow money from family and then pay them back, like it was demoralizing <laughs> and like sometimes it just felt like I should just stop, that. I should just give up, I should just go get a normal job. Thankfully, Wolfie the whole time was like, no, you are going to keep going and we're going to figure it out and we'll live we'll be frugal, we'll do what we have to do to get by, and, and you're gonna, you're gonna make it. You're gonna do it. And we would still go off on adventures in the woods, we would go hiking, we would do as many things as we could that brought us joy, even if the times were tough. And I'm so thankful for that, because I could have easily wasted those years just being sad and frustrated and thinking about the future and not living my life. And Instead, I have all these incredible memories, and along the way, I was painting outside like nonstop. So, I have all those years of painting in beautiful locations. You know, maybe it's also that was my therapy. <laughs> I often wonder if painting outside is like just the, the way that I connect with nature and connect with myself on the deepest level. And I, even though I have spoken with a therapist many many for many years um it's n like nothing compares to being immersed in nature and witnessing the change of light and the colors and just being so present that it just has there's no option but for it to like seep into your soul <laughs> and yeah that's its own form of therapy so i guess that's kind of why i want to make that my my focus and 
um, I want to pursue that as much as possible. So at the moment, even though I'm not chasing like the standard thing, well, maybe it's not even standard, but you know, chasing the old dreamer that I thought I needed to chase because that's what real artists do. I'm making my own path and whatever, wherever the heck that leads me, it's going to be an adventure either way. <laughs> and it may not work out and I may have to go back to doing things how I used to do them, but so far it's been good. Um, and like the coastal journey is incredible for me physically mentally artistically and i'm really excited to see where it takes me so i guess i just want to thank all of you for your support and patience and i really want to share the beauty of this world the beauty of scotland what i discover along the way and I know, there, I know that it does resonate with a lot of people, which is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. Okay, the sun moved again. Well, yes, it does. And my camera keeps overheating. So let's have a little change of pace. Let's, um, yeah, let's do something else. <laughs> I made spicy mango salsa and it, it's spicy to me. <laughs> Wolfie doesn't think it's spicy at all. And I have some guac and some nachos. Don't really know if this is considered lunch, but it's my lunch today. <laughs> There's something so wonderful and refreshing about cold, spicy, fresh salsa and guac on a hot summer day.
I really miss Mexican food. When I lived in Denver, I used to eat it almost like every day. And although I make it quite a lot, or we do regular burrito nights, it's just not the same. <laughs> I was thinking about how to get myself back into a good work routine, an art routine, <laughs> um, a sketch routine, whatever you want to call it. Just get back into a routine, because I have none right now. I lost it. <laughs> and I've mentioned that I've been obsessed with drawing rocks and coastal scenes and all of that, and that's because I'm doing my coastal journey. Um, but also, I realized it's because it's such a comforting subject. Rocks are <laughs> still subjects. They're not moving around. It's not chaotic. They can be as simple or complex as you want them to be. And I love that challenge of doing a very detailed coastal vignette or like a scene um, in like as few marks as I can while still getting the point across of all that detail because there's a ton of detail when you really stare at it. Rocks are pretty challenging if you want them to be. <laughs> Possibly for the foreseeable future, like a few weeks, that's just what I'm gonna let myself do because that's the one thing that I do find myself gravitating towards easily. It makes me pick up my sketchbook and my pencils and pens, all that. And I'll keep doing painting and, all, and, and different types of tutorials for my Patreon, but I think I'm just gonna focus on drawing right now and just let that flow and see where it takes me. And someday when I make a book about my coastal journey, I would love to have tons of drawings I can put in there along with text and photos and all of that, and paintings. I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here. I actually have a long day of doing bookkeeping and taxes because US taxes are due in June for expats. <laughs> Fun! <laughs> Um, but it's just something you gotta do. And I'm training Wolfie how to do all of that, so hopefully after this I won't have to do it again. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. For now, I don't really know what my schedule is gonna be. I mean, I've always tried to post weekly, and I'm gonna try to get back to that. I don't know how long it'll take me to get into like a good rhythm again, but I'm just trying to give myself time to adjust. <laughs> So, yeah, if hopefully the next time you see me, we'll be painting outside somewhere really lovely. <laughs> so take care, everyone, and I'll see you soon.
go through this every day? Aww. You love your daddy? Yeah. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> You have the coolest eyes. Mommy's touching him, so it's okay. Is that the kitten? Yep. Oh, kitten growl. A little hiss. Peter wants to play. Yeah. 